Today we're going to do a little something different. It's going to be a commentary on how Paramount sabotaged their own movie. Monster Trucks, from the director of Ice Age and the writer of Jurassic World, comes a new kid's adventure. There was a whole world of um, ways they could have promoted this film, but Paramount decided on this one. Paramount takes $115 million write down for Future Bomb. <laughs> that instills a massive amount of confidence in the movie going public. Monster Trucks has kind of a history behind it. You know, uh, GQ magazine, of all magazines, put out an article, how the hell did this movie happen? Oh, okay, that, that, that kind of attitude, it kind of baffles me because how does any movie happen? This is not like this is the, the dumbest concept ever. Yes, it's monsters and trucks. It's a kid's film. It's monsters and trucks. So, this article, I'm going to kind of go through it because it is a well-written article. It is good. It's kind of comprehensive to give you an idea of how this movie came about and uh, the, the troubles that it's faced since its inception. July 31st, 2013. In an exclusive story, infamous gossip columnist Nikki Fink, Finky Fink, reveals the existence of monster trucks to the world. Who hasn't seen boys, big and small, intently watching monster trucks do their stuff, writes Fink, bizarrely. Adding that monster trucks could hopefully become a Transformers-like franchise the way Paramount sees it. Okay, let's stop there for a second. Let me read that part again. Monster Trust could hopefully become a Transformers-like franchise. Okay, so by Transformers-like franchise, I'm assuming that they mean a franchise for kids and adults, mainly talking about toys. Okay, they want toys here. <clears throat> toys and merch sales. For those of you who don't know, Paramount actually has the rights to Transformers and G.I. Joe. So, you know, anyway, Paramount, G.I. Joe Transformers crossover. I'm just saying, you, you're looking, you're desperate for franchises lately. I'm just saying. Okay. So, Adam Goodman uh, was an executive at Paramount. And actually, he was the president of Paramount's motion picture group. So, he was head honcho. And he said this was a priority project. They wanted to get this one off the ground. They had a good feeling about it. And he had come up with the premise watching his kid play with toys. Now, there's, <clears throat> there's speculation on the internet that the kid came up with the idea. False. He probably talked to us because four-year-olds don't say, Hey, Dad, what about monsters and trucks, man? That's a good concept. So, come June 17, 2014, they're working on the film. And Paramount issues a press release. Not about monster trucks, but the toys it will spawn. You know, I got thoughts on that, but we're going to hold off on that for a second. There seems to be some um, weirdness surrounding the film, but here's the part where it gets tricky. February 26, 2015, Adam Goodman, the man who made Monster Trucks a priority project in the first place, is dismissed as the president of Paramount's motion picture group. Uh, later, Variety reports the firing appeared to take the executive by surprise. Hmm. His ouster was so abrupt that Goodman only learned he had been fired from media accounts. That was cold, according to individuals with knowledge of the situation. So that was cold, if it's true. So Monster Trucks lost the guy whose passion was being put behind it, and it became an orphan of sorts at, the, at Paramount. After that, Monster Trucks has a release date of May 29, 2015. It misses that date. Its new date is December 25th, 2015, Christmas movie. Okay, would have made a good Christmas movie. It misses that date. So they pushed it back to March 18th, 2016. It misses that date. And they pushed it all the way back to January of 2017. Now, let me tell you guys, having seen them film and reviewed it, and it's just a, it's an okay kids film. I mean, it's well done. It's well executed. It's well acted. It just is what it is. Uh, if you have little kids, there's no real. They like monster trucks and like adventures and some wrecks and whatnot. They probably enjoy it. Um, my review for that film is here, and I'll put an annotation at the end. Um, also, so check it out. 
So here's where it gets fun. September 21st, 2016, Viacom, Paramount's parent company, dramatically lowers its earning forecast, citing, among other things, a programming impairment charge of $115 million that is related to the expected performance of an unreleased film. Any sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that this unreleased film is monster trucks. In the face of this grim news, an analyst offering a withered prediction for the long-term prospects of Paramount. Okay, this is key, guys. Listen to this. The studio is gradually losing its major franchises, and it may be difficult to launch new ones in the increasingly competitive film slate. We are lowering our future margin assumptions for the studio. Like I said in my review, here's January 12th update. Finally, and with great fanfare, reviews for monster trucks begin to bubble up. They are not great, but not as dismal as you might expect. Why would you have expected them to be so dismal? It's because Paramount pushed the movie back for a year and a half, missing release dates, and then proclaiming there was going to be a $115 million write-down. That's how little faith they had in the film, because they fired the guy who was pushing the project, who believed in it. They basically killed their own franchise opportunity. See, and here's the thing that gets me about the, the media outlets, too, is they're making this much ado about it having a $125 million budget. This day and age, that's not news. That's a standard movie popcorn budget. Movies cost $100 million now. I mean, if you have special effects in it, you know, big, it's just, it, it's, that's, that's not unusual. It's not that expensive, really. So let's talk, Paramount. Let's get something straight here. Your whole push for this film was to create a franchise and a toy line, okay? That's cool. I understand what you're trying to do. But I propose a different angle here. How about you make a good movie? And out of that good movie comes the sequels and the toy lines and the t-shirts and the cups and the bottles and the notebooks and the books because people are interested You've made something that piped their interest. You made something that people believed in and wanted more of. That's how you build it. You don't build it. You're trying to build the roof before you build the foundation. And what little foundation you had laid, you set fire to. Of course this thing wasn't going to succeed. If you want more franchises, find some good original properties and make some good franchises. Yes, you lost Marvel. Okay, I feel your pain. You had a great thing going. But like Sony, this has not worked for Sony. It's not going to work for you. To sit there and try to pluck out the most obscure films that you think might have franchise potential. Like Jack Reacher, which wasn't a hit to begin with. I'm sure the sequel's fine. I haven't seen it yet. Or Triple X. Really? But because it had Vin Diesel, let's go ahead and green like that turkey too. Which, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm going to. I'll let you know what I think. Anyway. I, I'm of the, you know, my personal feelings are, if you, if you believe in the film, go ahead, you know, do it. You know, we might like it, we might hate it. But do it from the ground up. If you have one that hits, man, get behind that thing and make sequels that are good. Make merchandise that's good. We dig it. We like to buy stuff. I mean, especially guys like me that are collectors or guys like you, maybe. You know, you go to the comic store and you get that cool Pacific Rim toy and you keep the whole franchise alive because you wouldn't bought a toy. Um, yeah, but you got to make things that pike our interest that we really want, not manufacture this thing. And like I said, I kind of expected this movie to be a dog based on the way they were acting and based on their ideology behind making it but no it was actually an okay kids film and uh honestly it's kind of a more parental but i think i i think monster trucks could honestly have some legs on television cable netflix that kind of thing i think we'll see it around for a while so anyway guys thanks for listening to my my thoughts on um how paramount killed its basically killed its own film and how and how Honest to God franchises get made. All right, guys, that's my two cents. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Um, did Paramount kill its own movie? 
Uh, what do you think about these guys who are so focused on franchises and tent poles that they forget to make actual good films? Anyway, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you next time.